in Winnipeg. I have a Manitoba corporation. My good friend John from the MBA program, he is in Ontario. He lives in Toronto. I'm going to be staying with him later in the week. He's got an Ontario corporation. Now, in the U.S., in the state of Minnesota, we have a limited liability partnership, and it is formed between, not Keith and John, no, it's formed between the Manitoba Corp and the Ontario Corp. They have a limited liability partnership. Now, this is the only difference from Steve Martell's setup, is that he actually uses a C corporation. Our lawyer advised us that we didn't need something that complicated because of basically the expense involved and the reporting structures involved for what we were doing, and that was an example of talking to the people, talking to your advisors, that it's not necessary. Now there's my friend Kyle. Kyle is an American, he lives in Minneapolis. He has a limited liability company. That's fine for Kyle. Kyle's good with that flow through structure. The limited liability partnership is a recognized entity by the CRA. So taxes that this entity pays are credited towards taxes that this corporation and this corporation pay, so that we are not going to be stuck with double taxation. It was in fact the simplest, cheapest entity structure that was recognized by the tax treaty. Now over here, Kyle, Kyle's limited liability company and our LLP then jointly own another limited liability company. Now, I didn't put the whole numbers in here, but it's 50-50 into here. Now it's 70-30 into here. We basically did that to keep it slightly, you know, pretty much around a third, but if we were getting to 66 and two thirds, 33 and a third, it was getting complicated. So this is now where our ultimate partnership is. This is where the three guys have our partnership. That limited liability company, and it's okay that it's flow through. It flows through into somebody who can benefit from the flow through, and it flows through into an entity that pays taxes that is then credited for those taxes in the country where the ultimate owners live. So we're, we're okay with having the LLC down here as long as it's under the limited liability partnership. And then finally, we actually have this limited liability company, and it owns these three entities, these three properties down here. So that's actually you know, the name of the property. So they are technically supposed to be drawn in it, but it was like, you know, it was late and there's only so much I could do with PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> so forgive me for that one. These three actual properties are inside the limited liability company. Together they add up to approximately $100,000 in equity. We bought those properties all cash. There was no financing on them. So we have our, we've sort of hit our threshold for where we want to be the next one, this limited liability company will then open another LLC to begin acquiring the next group of properties. So, just to give you an example of, well, why did I go into the states? Why did I buy this stuff? So this is a con this is our first property. It's a condo we bought. Strawberry Commons. Nice blue collar neighborhood. Parking lot is full of trucks, but the trucks are all guys who own plumbing and heating electrical businesses. They're auto mechanics, they're good people, good incomes, you know, nice tile bathrooms, you know, that's the living room, French doors. It's a, it's a one bedroom, but you know, it's a nice place. There's the exterior, it's a large complex, 100 and something, 130 units or thereabouts. Everybody's got a garage. Every unit comes with a garage. <coughs> You know, and this for 22 grand. When I was first introduced to this place in 2010, I wish I had an American Express black card because they were selling for 12 grand. <coughs> and there was probably 20 for sale out of that 100, and I could have could have bought a fifth of the complex with one credit card back then. <laughs> um, our next house was Penn, Penn Avenue. This is just a one bedroom house. It's nothing fancy. Decent flooring, you know, you know, nothing exciting in the kitchen, nothing exciting in the bathroom, you know, but it's 30 grand. <laughs> you know, this was our next house, Topax. It's a nicer place, a little bit more money, you know, but trees, it's got a garage, you know, it's hardwood floors now this time around. You know, kitchen's maybe, you know, depending on your preference, about
about the same. But the thing is that each one of these places uh, rents for between nine hundred and a thousand dollars a month. <laughs> so, you know, um, you know, I might my forty grand might get me forty grand would be a down payment, right? <laughs> on, an on an investor property in this neck of the woods. I mean, shoot, I mean, forty grand, twenty percent down. That's not even going to buy me that much house. You know, and I've managed to buy a thousand dollars a month in rent, and the cash flow portion of that is probably six hundred. So six hundred dollars cash flow off forty grand. I mean, my repayments pretty quick, and that's why we're buying as much as we possibly can down there. Your property values be going up at the same time? Uh, yeah. It would be at market. No, that, and it's th this is the thing that's very annoying. This. Uh, this complex back here, like I said, three years ago I was looking at these places for 12, now they're 22. There's nothing at 22 now. I mean, we've been putting offers in at 30, 35, and getting countered and getting rejected um, for the same units, right? I mean, the prices are going up because the, the lending is starting to come back to the people that live there. As I said, there was no reason for Minneapolis to be down. Their their jobs there was their jobs stayed the same. I mean, their unemployment rates below five percent as well as the Winnipeg's. Their uh, their their incomes are high. Their their rents are high. There was no reason for it except that the lending stopped because the whole system shut down in the states. As the system begins to get back into it, as they begin to lend money back out to the people that live there that work there, you know, the properties are going up and up and up in price. I wish I had millions of dollars because I would have pulled the trigger in 2010. It didn't matter to me. It, it, people were saying, well, what happens if this $12,000 condo goes down? Do I care? I don't care. I don't care if they're all worth a buck and I have to pay. If I had to pay 10 grand for each one of those condos and you told me that tomorrow they'd be worth a dollar each and I was going to lose $9,000 and nine, <laughs> $999,000, I wouldn't care because I also knew that they were renting for $900 a month. And with $230 in condo fees and $11 in insurance, <laughs> like <laughs> like my insurance is $11 a month. So Property taxes are low as well. Yeah, that, well, and that's that's actually rolled into my 235 HOA. So it was like, yeah, that was a $600 a month cash flow. So I just, I'd take as many as I could. I'm, I'm upset the meltdown is over. I want it to stay longer. I need more time to raise more money. Yes, Ed. Sorry, Keith, uh, question. There's been uh, a growing number of comments on the news and different websites regarding the meltdown may start to happen again within the next year or two because of the five-year refinance apart from five years ago when it really happened. Yeah. So this is going to be a, a, a sort of semi-meltdown again. Uh, any... <laughs> <laughs> Totals. It, yeah. it, it is. It is. To, it makes total sense that we'll have like almost like the baby boom and then the echo boom. Yeah. We had the bust, and we'll have the baby bust. Well, we'll have the yeah. echo from that. There was also supposed to be, if you look at the long-term cycles, uh, there's also the commercial one, that's, you know, the commercial meltdown coming as those lenders were locked in on a different schedule. So it's a different uh, cycle that commercial was on. And I'm hoping that that comes along, I'd say, probably give me about two years to be ready to start buying those like 50 unit buildings, you know? But uh, I want that to happen too. Because it's, it's just a buying opportunity if you think of it in terms of cash flow. It's good I have your card, I'll keep in touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that was, uh, that, that's, that's the stuff that we've got. We're obviously like, I mean, uh, Kofax, uh, we only got this one uh, a couple months ago. Uh, just finished the reno. It's rented out now. But I mean, we're buying, we're writing offers like crazy. There's just not the, uh, the inventory is not there anymore. That's the heartbreaking part. I mean, there are still deals, but man, are we having to work for them. You know? So, uh, you got to find the right pocket in downtown places. Yeah. And there are places where there's a lot of deals. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and we want to stay. It's good rent. We want to stay where Kyle can still get yeah. to them. So we want to stay in the greater Minneapolis area. 
And so along those lines, because we've been buying all cash, I've now started flipping in, uh, I've started flipping in Winnipeg, uh, just because I'm there. Al is back from his round the world trip. He's flipped hundreds of properties in his life. His wife works, his kids are in school. What's he gonna do with himself? So Al and Keith are out flipping houses. <laughs> and I know that wasn't really the, the point of my topic, but I wanted to like sort of, sort of speak to you, the, the, the folks that are here, um, I found a strategy that worked for me in the US. And because I've been buying with all cash, and I'll tell you about the US lending situation first. Um, when, when Al and I first went down to Vegas and Phoenix that time, where his partner Todd bought that condo in Vegas, Al bought six houses in Phoenix. He wrote 300 offers to buy six houses. Phoenix was starting to already heat up at that point. He had sold his primary residence because he was about to leave for a world trip for a year. So talked his wife into selling their house. And then he also sold one big investment property in the city. He went down there with 600 grand in his pocket and he spent it. He bought six houses. But, uh, but that was all cash. And we talked to a lot of lenders. And you're talking about, we're going in to meet bankers and the guy has 